Hello and welcome to lecture 10 on special relativity. In today's class, we're going to discuss the notion of tensors. This will be the most general way in which we can uh, extend our dictionary to cover all kinds of objects which transform under the transformations of special relativity, uh, that is under rotations and Lorentz boosts. So to start off, we'll first discuss the transformations of vectors or four vectors again, uh, but using different notation than we used last time. So rather than use matrix notation, we will switch to what is known as index notation. Now the notation is actually going to be extremely useful when we try to understand the idea of tensors. Then we'll discuss specifically the idea of what are called contravariant and covariant indices. The one important thing is that these indices do not represent different objects, but they're just a different way of representing the same objects. And then we'll talk about the ideas of dot products, um, which we discussed before for uh, for four vectors using matrix notation, and we'll discuss what this looks like in uh, index notation. And we'll see it's here that uh, the use of upper and lower indices uh, becomes, uh, simplifies the way in which we write down dot products. Then we'll see that it's also possible to construct a different type of product of four vectors. Uh, rather than just a dot product, and this is called a tensor product. And once we understand how these tensor products transform, we can generalize this idea to conjecture other objects called tensors, which transform in the same way as these tensor products. So this gives us a set of generalized objects which have transformations, uh, which are different from four vectors under Lorentz transformations. Um, and this mo most general set of objects which transform in this way, these tensors, will allow us to understand the most general way in which Lorentz transformations can act on different objects. In the last class, uh, we saw how to write the transformations for four vectors using what is called matrix notation. So in matrix notation, we took a matrix lambda, which is an element of the Lorentz group, uh, so if we take proper orthochronous Lorentz transformations, it belongs to the set of matrices of SO plus 3, 1. Uh, so that is matrices that satisfy the property lambda transpose dot G dot lambda is G. And determinant of lambda is plus 1 rather than minus 1. And uh, the zero, 0 component, that is the top leftmost component of lambda, was uh, greater than or equal to 0. And we saw that if we have such a matrix, lambda, belonging to this Lorentz group, then um, we could take quantities such as four vectors, and these four vectors, to give uh, specific examples, were things like the time and space coordinates, which we denote as the four vector x, and uh, the combination of partial derivatives with positive sign for the time-like derivatives and negative sign for the space-like derivatives, and also uh, a four velocity u. Okay. Uh, and these four quantities, we found that if we have an observer S and we want to go to an observer S prime and find the corresponding quantities according to observer S prime, and if we call the quantities for observer S prime as the vectors V prime, 
which we denote as x prime, partial prime, and u prime, then we saw that the transformation law which relates these different quantities, that is the quantity that uh, the transformation that relates x prime to x, uh, partial prime to partial, and u prime to u is actually very simple. Uh, so in general, for any v prime to relate it to v, the transformation rule is simply that v prime is equal to lambda dot v, where this is a matrix product. Now, this transformation rule is true for four vectors. So if v is a four vector, it transforms in this way. Now, it's not obvious what quantities transform like four vectors. Obviously, if we just take any four numbers, it's not guaranteed that they transform like four vectors. What we have found is that assuming that t, x, y, z transform like a four vector, so this is what we called x, then we could derive the dictionary or the transformation for the quantities partial, which was partial partial ct, minus partial x, minus partial y, and minus partial partial z. And we could also derive the transformation law for u, which was c, and then ux over square root of 1 minus u square by c square, uy over square root of 1 minus u square by c square, and uz over square root of 1 minus u square over c square. Where uh, ux is the change in the x coordinate in frame s uh, per unit time interval in the frame s and so on okay for u y and u z so the transformations laws for u and this quantity partial were derived from the transformation law for x and therefore we found that uh, partial and u also transform like four vectors okay so it's not always true that you will be able to derive the transformation law uh, from the transformation law for x. Okay, some things just intrinsically transform like four vectors, but we don't have a way to derive from first principles that this transforms uh, like the quantity x. Okay, so. Uh, in that case, you postulate that something is a four vector and you start with that assumption. So it's not easy to identify four vectors, but once you have four vectors, they transform in this way. Okay, that is, uh, given V in some reference frame S, you can go to a different reference frame V prime, where V prime is related to V through this transformation. Now, today we'll see a different way of writing the same transformation using what is called index notation. Okay. This is just a way to denote matrix multiplication using explicit indices. So, supposing I have a matrix M, which is uh, an n cross n matrix, and I have uh, uh, a column vector v, which is an n cross 1 matrix, then the matrix product of m with v can be written in terms of index notation as, let me identify the elements of m with m i j where i runs from 1 through n, 
and j runs from 1 to n. And let me identify the elements of v by uh, vj, where uh, again j runs from 1 through n. Okay, and if we sum over j, then uh, what we get is the matrix product of m with v. Okay, and this gives us v prime or in index notation this is uh, strictly speaking the ith element of v prime so let me just move this down here so v prime if i take the ith entry of v prime it's related to um uh to the matrix product in index notation in this way Note that the only thing that we're summing is over j, where j goes from 1 to n. On both sides, i is a free index, which means we have to make a choice of what i is from the list of 1 through n. So if we think about this in terms of column vectors, so we have a column vector v prime, and the entries i, so the entry i corresponds to the ith row of this matrix and the statement is if we want to find what v prime i is that is this quantity then what we need to know is in the matrix m m we need to find the first we need to find the ith call uh, ith row so that is we need to find the row over here so this would be m i 1 m i 2 and so on m i n then we find the corresponding vector v and we take the entries v1 v2 v3 to v n and we multiply m i1 by v1 m i2 by v2 and so on and m i n by v n we sum all of those together and that would give us vi prime okay so j is the second index over columns so j is one two till n and when we sum over all columns and multiply by the corresponding uh, vjs the entries in the rows of v we get vi prime okay so this is just well known from uh, writing matrix multiplication using index notation so similarly, uh, we can write down for four vectors. So specializing now to the case n is equal to four. Uh, we can write down for four vectors v prime is equal to lambda dot v in matrix notation. And uh, we make a few small changes when using matrix notation in special relativity. So the first thing that we do is we use Greek letters for the indices. So rather than use the letters i and j, we typically use things like mu, nu, rho, and sigma. Okay, so let's start with using mu and nu. And uh, so we'll write this as lambda mu nu v nu and v prime mu and a sum over nu over here so lambda was a four by four matrix uh, if we choose a value of mu and we choose a value of nu we pick out a particular entry of lambda so choosing mu in this case would be choosing a row of lambda and choosing nu would pick out a column of lambda okay and the one thing that you'll note is that the row index mu is raised over here so we we make a distinction between row indices and column indices by raising the row indices so the mu, uh, the mu index which corresponds to a row okay a row um 
is raised. Okay. So row indices are raised. And similarly, you see that for uh, V, new is the row index, right? So the index VJ, the jth index correspond, the value of J correspond to which row we're talking about. So again, we raise the row index. Okay, so in all three places, the index that is raised is the row index. Okay, and column indices are written as lower indices. So let, let me write this uh, more specifically okay, or, or with different colors so that you can clearly see. The raised indices I'm going to write in green. And the column indices I will write uh, in a different color. I'll use white. So this is the same matrix product in index notation. Okay, so uh, this is the second change. We the row indices are raised, and the column indices are lowered. Okay, and. Uh, the value of mu, instead of saying it goes over 1, 2, 3, 4, we say it goes over 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so 0 being the time like coordinate and 1, 2, 3 being the space like coordinates. And similarly for, for new as well. So for both mu and new, okay, rather than saying the values go over 1, 2, 3, 4, we say they go over 0, 1, 2, 3. So 0 is our time like coordinate. Uh, this is our x-like coordinate, and this is our y-like coordinate, and this is our z-like coordinate. Okay. Now, the third change that we will do is the sum over new runs from 0 to 3. Okay, it runs over 0, 1, 2, 3. So the third change that we will make is uh, we know that when we have one column index and one row index, which are the same, that is new is the same as new, it's like we're mul multiplying this row with this column. Okay. And uh, whenever we do this, we will always be summing over new because in that case, we will be taking a matrix product. So we will drop the summation and assume that whenever we have one lowered index and one raised index, which are the same, so the value of new is the same as the value of new, that means that I have to sum over new automatically. Okay, so the third thing we will do is drop the summation or make it implicit. Okay, that is, we don't write it down explicitly, but we assume that such a summation is being done. So we write it as v prime mu is lambda mu nu v nu. Okay, so we've just dropped the summation sign, but implicitly we're assuming that we're summing over the values of nu, where nu runs from 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this is called the Einstein summation convention. Okay, which is whenever I have a repeated index, in this case new, which is both raised and lowered, so it appears as a raised index and a lowered index, I assume that there's a summation over new. Okay, then assume a summation. Okay. 